with Starfleet Starfleet built back up to a point that everyone felt secure again after the events of the synth attack, the organization once again began looking into mission-specific Starship designs to augment its fleet. And finally, Starfleet Starship designers would take a look at an experimental class, bringing several new variants of that design to life, and the Pilgrimage class would be born. But what do we know about this breakthrough Starship class? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to another episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Pilgrimage class, one of my own fanfiction kitbashes of the Odyssey class to better understand its place in Star Trek history. As I continue to attempt to bring you quality and Star Trek loving content, I've begun to create my own designs in an effort to bring to life an era of Trek that we know very little about. But because this is just a bit of fanfiction, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust, and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. After the synth attack on Utopia Planitia, the United Federation of Planets member worlds were feeling very vulnerable. With two-thirds of its fleet destroyed or badly damaged, it was felt that Starfleet Command no longer had the firepower necessary to protect its space. In response, Starfleet Command would make the unprecedented decision to begin a massive Starship building project, consisting of only one Starship design, the Inquiry Class, to fill the void left over by the attack. The Inquiry Class was one of the most hastily designed Starship classes ever brought to the conference table for Starfleet Command. However, this vessel class would also be one of the easiest ever to be constructed, using various mass-produced, replicated components. As a result, construction time for the Inquiry class was drastically cut down when compared to other various Starship classes. By the latter part of the 2390s, Starfleet Command was back up to full strength thanks to the Inquiry class, and its attention would once again be turned to the various Starship designs to fill mission-specific roles for the Federation. Starfleet Command would start by reviewing all vessel classes that had been constructed before the synth attack. Several designs, such as the Galaxy, Nebula, Excelsior, and Miranda classes would be approved for redesign and construction going forward, while others such as the Ambassador, Oberth, and Jaeger classes would be completely dropped and forgotten. Even the Constellation class would be thrown into the junk pile only years later to be revived itself into a brand new design known as the Sagan class. In the early 2380s, Starfleet Command had begun a new great experiment, known as Project Odyssey, in a bid to create a brand new propulsion system which could finally break the transwarp barrier. The Odyssey class would have two starships constructed, the USS Odyssey and the USS Verity, each with its own new propulsion system, both testing the viability of each of these new forms of galactic travel. However, after the synth attack, experiments such as Project Odyssey were put on hold, seen as a luxury that Starfleet could ill afford. But again, once the fleet was back up to full strength, Starfleet Command began to turn its eyes back to the Odyssey class as a starship of the line that could herald in the 25th century. And like the Constitution and Excelsior classes of over a century before, Starfleet Command directed its core of starship design engineers to begin to create several variants of the Odyssey class and the Pilgrimage class would be born. Sitting at a length of approximately 502 meters, the Pilgrimage class would be the Odyssey class's answer to the Miranda class, a workhorse vessel starship class, designed to be operated by 800 officers and crew members. It should be noted that although considered to be a successor of sorts to the Miranda class, 
the pilgrimage class was truly nothing of the sort. Starfleet Command never intended to mass-produce the pilgrimage class like how they had mass-produced the much smaller Miranda class. Instead, the pilgrimage class's mission profile would be far more specific to the future goals of the Federation, expansion and colonization. As a result, the pilgrimage class would contain several industrial replicators, designed to aid in establishing colonies and outposts in the ever-expanding borders of Federation space. Unlike its Odyssey-class big sister, the pilgrimage class would not contain any new propulsion systems, relying on the well-established and much smaller warp drive systems to provide faster-than-light travel for vessels of this class. As a result, she would have a standard safe cruising speed of warp factor 8 and an emergency maximum speed of warp factor 9.9 .9 for 12-hour increments. Tactically, the pilgrimage class would be armed to the teeth, containing a large number of phaser emitter arrays, as well as three photon torpedo launchers capable of firing photon, quantum, and various other torpedo-style weapons should the need arise. The pilgrimage class would also contain several areas internally that would be easily converted to mission-specific requirements, such as barrack-style accommodations to allow for the maximum number of colonists or officers to be transported to a new facility or Federation planet. The pilgrimage class would be launched in 2401 and would perform exactly as expected and Starfleet would order a further 12 of the class to be constructed over a 10-year period. But by 2411, even though the Pilgrimage class had been seen as a success for its mission profile, Starfleet Command would decide to halt construction on any further vessels of the class. This was because the Federation was beginning to change drastically. The collapse of the Romulan Star Empire after Romulus's destruction had set in motion several major galactic changes. One of these major changes would be the establishment of the Free Romulan Republic, a democratic version of the Star Empire, run by the civilians on a new Romulan homeworld known as New Romulus. And this new governmental body was gaining in popularity and also going out of its way to redefine itself as an organization with the same moral values as its once enemy, the Federation. Several projects would be undertaken by the Federation and New Romulus, beginning to cement a peace between the old foes that no one thought was possible. Meanwhile, the Federation and the Klingon Empire, though rocky at times, would also grow closer, with the Klingon Empire stepping up to the plate after the synth attack to help protect its Federation allies from any outside threats. Chancellor Martok would turn over a special task force of over 500 Klingon starships to Federation control after the attack, to allow Starfleet the time it needed to build back up its fleet. Even Cardassia would throw its support to the Federation, with its new government vowing to assist Starfleet in protecting Bajor, the Badlands, and the surrounding space in case the Dominion decided to attack once again. And with Starfleet continuing to make breakthroughs in technology, thanks to the joint Federation-Romulan-Borg reclamation project, the need for such large starships began to dwindle, with Starfleet opting for smaller but far more powerful starship designs for its fleet. That did not mean that it was curtains for the pilgrimage class, however as Starfleet would continue to refit and update the design regularly, and the Pilgrimage class would end up having a lifetime of almost 150 years of service before finally being decommissioned. Created during a time of grand expansion and change, the Pilgrimage class would go on to become a valued part of the Federation fleet, earning this class its well-deserved place in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Pilgrimage class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos about my own Kitbash Starship designs? Well, leave your comments in the section below. 
And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel establish itself throughout the Federation? Then consider becoming a channel patron. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.